I was watching a video by Julian Iliot where he was looking at one of these, taking some scope images, and uh, once he said that these uh, these are controlled by turning the power off and then they switch colors, I realized there is one thing I want to do with these. So they they all uh, switch to the same color. I'm just gonna plug this in. So you click this button and it switches between uh, different colors, off, and a couple of fading modes. Uh, so these all have the same color all the time, uh, and they shift colors every time you turn the power off very briefly. I'm going to show a scope image of this soon. But they're all the same color. Uh, so I was thinking what if you overdrive the switching frequency and get them to show different co colors? So that's what I'm gonna do. So first I need to break this thing open. Hmm. That looks sonically welded. Yeah, that's welded. Hot glue needs to go away, and here is a tip for that. Cooling it down. This is a, an electronic cooling spray. Makes it very brittle. And there we go. Still works good. So on that board is reverse polarity diode for the input. Hmm, that looks for all the world as a bridge drive circuit and a micro with the numbers washed off. So here on the scope we can see uh, the same sweeping signals uh, Julian had on his video, and uh, zooming in we see it's just a set of uh, short low pulses. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use this waveform generator to generate a signal and see if I can run it too fast for the LEDs to catch up, and that way get them out of sync. But the first thing I'm going to need to do is uh, put a diode in the signal path of this circuit so I can patch in the signal generator to the same circuit without burning anything up. So I'm going to get to that and I'm going to get back to you. So I've now uh, rebuilt this circuit and it took quite a lot more than I thought. I needed to move a couple of resistors and stuff, but uh, oh also and I burnt out a transistor so I had to replace it. However, now it does what it did before. It goes into fading mode, but if I attach this diode with a 40 kilohertz signal to the system, it uh, switches so fast it almost doesn't turn on, and when it comes back, they're out of sync. So that's a, that's a viable way to get these out of sync and get some color into the system. It's strange that the, that the factory didn't think of, of doing that, actually, because that would have been really easy for the microcontroller in here, just putting out a high frequency signal, getting them out of sync, and uh, getting a much nicer effect for one of the programs. So there's one more test I want to do. I, I want to just show the color order of this uh, using a very low frequency square wave, like a one hertz square wave. So to do that I'm gonna leave this in a, an always on mode, turn the power off, turn the frequency generator off, solder this diode permanently on there, I couldn't leave it on because the capacitance of this wire disabled the signal from the microcontroller. So now I have a 1 hertz signal. Oh, right. Uh, never mind. Uh, I need a pulsed signal.
Hmm, now half of them are shifting. So, just let me reset this. So this is the, the different colors they can be with just a pulsed signal. Yeah, so that's the the standard 7 and off sequence you would get from an R, G and B in all combinations. Quite a neat LED, you just turn it off for about a hundred microseconds or so and it sw switches color. If you turn it off too long or too short it's gonna go out of sync which is could actually be used as a feature in this case. So what I'm driving it with now is one hertz pulse with a 100 microsecond low pulse and the rest is high. So it's just cycling through what it's, what it's gonna do and if I mess with the, the frequency here I'm gonna get it to go out of sync. There we go. So now the blinking is out of sync. So yeah, what this LED needs is a high drive signal with a 100 microsecond low pulse to switch to the next color. And what I thought would work does actually work, where you can get them to get go out of sync by using an out of specification low pulse. So in this drawing you can see how the circuit looks looked uh, when I got it and uh, you can see there's a very strange constru construction of transistors where you just double up on the half bridges probably for inversion. It's an odd construction. Anyway here is how I changed it to connect the generator. This is not the best way but it's the way I chose. And here you can see the board after all the modifications. Anyway, I hope this is uh, useful for anyone. And thanks to Julian for uh, letting me know about this LED strip.